Sarah Smith plays Chief Roy in Succession, which just concluded its acclaimed second season with an explosive family betrayal, another one. Um, I'm Rob Curie, a senior editor here at Gold Derby with one of the stars of the show, Sarah Snook. Sarah, Shiv is a complicated character, right? So underneath the glossy exterior, which is polished and ambitious and calculating, uh, there's glimpses of her vulnerability and her insecurity. And I'm, I'm always wondering when you're playing a character like that, how difficult is it to play a character who is essentially also kind of playing a role herself? Oh, um, I, I mean, I love it because it, it, you know, the, there's, there's conversations in the last, you know, five or so years about, or, and more, about having strong female characters and all that. And I think, you know, she definitely falls into that category of, of a strong female character. But the more interesting thing, I think, is having complex female characters. And I think she definitely is one. I think she's, um, she's got a lot of, uh, sort of monsters that she's, demons that she's dealing with hiding in the, in the closet and, and things that she's uh, not comfortable with uh, of her own sort of self and selfhood, uh, but she's quite good at um, at uh, disguising them. And I think uh, I was talking to Kieran recently in, in, in a panel. He said uh, he said that in, he remembered it in the first season. He said something like, um, "You're we're all fucked up, but you're probably the most fucked up. You're just better at hiding it." And I think that's probably <laughs> becoming more and more true for sure. But I love it. I love playing that. You know, everyone's everyone's hiding some sort of version of themselves from the public. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to put it. But that's not to say that she doesn't have the killer instinct that her dad so desperately kind of wants from his kids, which comes up in the finale with um, Kendall. Because that the episode just before the finale, DC, where um, I'm sure you've talked about this ad nauseum, where um, she goes to the playground and approaches the, the Waystar witness and yeah. um, kind of like has that woman to woman chat and it's very kind of open and transparent, but it's also so calculating and ruthless and effective. And I think that is kind of, that could also be the true shift. And I'm wondering what it was like to do that scene. That dialogue was so pitch perfect, right? Mm. Yeah, it was somewhat, it was like, and it was also uh, longer as well. Like there was parts that, well, not heaps longer or a little longer, but there were parts that were, trimmed for time which made absolute sense but it was such a gift to be given that and like it was like a basically a six-page monologue of it you know with another um character in the scene and sally was brilliant um but it's a daunting thing to to um to to embark on as a as a as a um, character in a tv show you suddenly like you know you're shooting very fast and suddenly you've got a six-page monologue to um but that I love the the skillful manipulation just from Jesse of the audience as well. Like there's, you know, Shiv has been positioned in some ways to be the audience's entrance point to this kind of family, which is sort of seen as more liberal or more uh, easily palatable, I guess, more palatable than the rest of the Roy family. But she's just as bad as them sometimes. And I think, you know, I, I, the thing is, like with that scene, it's kind of what you would want your friend to say to you if they were protecting you, if they weren't going to, like, be there with you the whole time to support you and, you know, because you would just, you would, as that woman, get absolutely torn apart and it is such a thing to 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 be the spokesperson for something like that and it's, 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 it, what, she, what she does and what she says is right but <laughs> it's the manner in which she does it for the purpose for which she does it. And that's what's wrong, I think. And it's where I think there's a real moral gray area in sort of Shiv in that moment is because her motives are not as, um, as, as rosy as you know, they could be. <laughs> Actually, like you could maybe um, subtitle the show moral gray area, right? Because a lot of them, their yeah. moral compass is slightly off and, and that's, there's this, there's this thing that I try to explain with succession with people that I haven't seen it yet. The people on it are kind of repugnant and unlikable in certain ways. They're super rich and, you know, they're very powerful and have all these issues. And yeah, I want to be around them for some reason. I want to hang yeah. out with these people. I want to watch them every week. I want them in my living room. Why is that? Why do you think people love watching these people? I don't know. Maybe it's because, like, we sort of recognise each, each ourselves in them a bit, um, but they're inevitably they're fallible um, just as much as we all are as humans. I think also maybe there's something that is like uh, when when someone is sort of successful in the ways that we uh, attribute, 
to, you know, like the way we see people who are successful, we, 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 uh, the marks of success are like uh, money, power, status, all those things we traditionally see as successful. And when we see the people who hold those in, in terms of the Roy's, we see people who hold those traditional markers of success being such idiots and buffoons and, and unlikable. There's something del- delicious about that where you're like, ha, huh, see, you're not like, you're not the perfect person. But we also, I don't know, it is that thing of like you want to hang out with them. Like, I mean, I don't know, the the feeling on set as well, like I really love working with all the cast members. I want to hang out with them. Um, and we're playing despicable characters in a lot of sense. Not completely despicable, but, you know. Yeah. Because they're real people. They have like different dimensions yeah. and, and that's the beauty of it. But I think part of it is um, the dialogue between them, the verbal Bars, barbs are so deliciously like searing in so many scenes. Um, yeah, that, that's a highlight for me. Is it a highlight for you guys to do that to do that dialogue together? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so delicious getting to read <laughs> getting to read those lines in the um in the in the uh, the read through like before we actually uh, get to before we even get to like the shooting part of it just the read throughs of the episodes beforehand it's so fun to do because because you get to like discover the lines for the first time and and there's such you know brilliant insults and delicious sort of uh put downs and and comebacks and and then you know jesse's jesse's writing is just magic well and you know obviously all the other writers if they're you know each episode's written by a different writer and then jesse's got sort of final say on it but it's so much fun you know (laughs) Oh, totally. And the, um, like, this particular season, we got to also have um, new characters introduced, like Nan played by Cherry Jones and um, Rhea played by Holly Hunter. And uh, I was wondering how the dynamic amongst the cast changed when they joined you guys for a little while. Um, Because you've all kind of found your feet and you've got a great rhythm together and then you bring on these two larger-than-life actors who are playing these really awesome characters. And, And how did that change the dynamic at all? I mean, it didn't really change the dynamics so much as just like made things make more sense in some ways. The same thing happened with Harriet Walter coming on in the in the first season. You know, yeah. it's like it it really just uh, made it sort of like let the the dust settle, I guess, a little bit with the, with the family because we suddenly understood why why these kids were the way they were when we met Harriet. We were like, of course, that's the mum that these kids have. <laughs> um, and then the same thing happened with with Holly. It's like you know, you're folding into a family that has already got such a, uh, a set dynamic, I guess, and, and having the ease of which that Cherry and Holly just folded in and with these you know, uh, powerhouse kind of characters was so great to watch, like just to, to, you know, reinforce new realities of this world. Like there's endless details that get to be uh, drawn in and, 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 and solidified. I love it. It's like I totally believe that Nan Pierce is right now holding some sort of cocktail party with break bumpers <laughs> Long Island. <laughs> um, you know, like even though the Roy's aren't there, like the stories continue when we're not there and those characters keep going. Yeah, they do feel quite um, real and fleshed out to me. And um, that leads me to this, actually. It's what surprised me about season two, maybe not surprised, but the show really, uh, the way that it portrays women is really interesting. Um, it could have been lazy, like some other shows perhaps might be, uh, where they're just kind of passive or they're, they're like, you know, the, the second-hand character. Uh, here you've got, instead, the, the guys can be quite aggressive and volatile and impotent and Damage. The women like she, Jerry, Marsha, and even Nana Rea are astute and confident, resilient, um, but they're also quite damaged as well and, and very complicated. And that's really refreshing. What are your thoughts on how women are portrayed on this show? Yeah, I mean, you just you've you've, you've nailed it. Um, <laughs> they are <laughs> confident, resilient, interesting. And I think it comes back to what I said before about them just being complex. You know, they're they're fun to play because they have. Um, their material and they have different, um, you know, they've, they've all got their own motives and objectives and they're equal in, 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 um, interesting, you know, in, in interest as much as they are equal in, in terms of power. And I think, uh, that's inevitably interesting. You know, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have diversity of, of, of character. And we probably do need, I think, in some ways, more diversity of, of, um, of ethnicity as well. Uh, this is, traditionally very much a a white male sort of um, domain. Uh, And so showing that is is valid because of that. But and then having more female characters, yes, that's more interesting. And then, you know, introducing more a a broader 
a broader look, I suppose, at what like reflects more of what the world is rather than just mm. what the um, straight white male version of business corporate is, you know. <laughs> Even though he's, as you say, quite accurate, actually, I suppose. Yeah, and that's what the well. of the writing team have sort of have sought out to to present is like you know the real, realities of these worlds. But yeah. we also then have a responsibility to to try and change that reality by presenting something different yeah. on screen. Absolutely. You know, uh, the other thing that um, strikes me about the show is the relationships between some of the characters, and um, everybody has their favourites. And you know, we could talk forever about. Um, she's relationship with her dad and even particularly this season her relationship with um, Roman But I was actually more curious about the relationship between Tom and Shiv because yeah. I mean I just I, I love what what um, Matthew McFadden's doing with that character as well But I sometimes watch them and just think why is she with him? What do you think that yeah. is? Yeah, I get that a lot. I get people like wonder why Shiv is with Tom a lot and I don't know it makes sense to me it um <laughs> And somehow, like, telling you why <laughs> gives it away. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, there's, like, what I really like about, about doing TV. I've never really done TV in this way where it's, um, I don't know what's going to happen in the next, I don't assume I know what's going to happen in the season three, but I also haven't known what's going to happen in the next couple of episodes um, prior to shooting them uh, or even, like, the next episode prior to shooting it. Um, and part of that is, like, what I love about that is, is, is you really have to invest in and, and live the present moment and just accept things for the facts that they are. And I guess being told that she loves Tom, or at least she is in a relationship with Tom. I like going, okay, well, I accept that as a fact blindly and, and choosing my own reasons of why uh, until that is to change at some point when in the future, when you know maybe it's no longer the case, but Matthew and I have created the, um, this sort of the backstory uh, individually as well as together for why they are together. I think, you know, if you were to uh, analyze it, there's, you know, there's some obvious reasons why she's with Tom. She a terrible <laughs> relationship with her father. She's dating an older man, you know, married to now an older man who's more easily controllable, I think, than any other man that she's been with. I think, uh, you know, there's a safety with being with Tom that she probably wouldn't want to admit to many people publicly, but, um, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's very interesting. I like that. And it makes, it does make a lot of sense. And, um, it, it leads me to this question, given that, as you say, you're not completely aware of what's going to happen, um, you know, episodes in advance, maybe a little, but not the whole uh, arc of the season. Yeah, that, really. that gives you that authentic, it makes you feel a bit more authentic to me, I think, because it's kind of, you're living in that moment. Then has anything truly shocked you when you picked up the script, ready for the table, where you're like, shit, that's yeah. huge. Like, did that happen often? Oh, yeah. I mean, the last, <laughs> very, like, season two's finale, I don't, you know, yeah. I say more of them because I don't want to give it away if someone's not watched it. But yeah. I read that just, like, an hour before, not even, like, I finished reading that maybe 25 minutes before we did the table read because we'd only just received it that morning. And, um... And like, have my hands over my mouth by myself in my trailer, going, oh, I can't believe he's done that. He's so in the field, and yet made so much sense when it happened. I was like, yes, of course that's going to happen. But what's going to happen? Excuse my language. What's going to happen for um for season three now? That sets up such a a battle. Oh. I don't know. I, I, I'm actually getting slightly like you know uh, overwhelmed by it because I just uh, I when you're in when you're really a fan of the show and you're kind of following it episode to episode, you get so invested obviously in what these characters are doing and that that reveal at the end and Kendall did that at the um press conference was so mind blowing and then to have Logan kind of stare, sneering at the uh, TV and then smiling and then it go cuts to credits. I was just like. Please give me yeah. more. So, yeah. Uh, and I, and I'm, I know you've been asked this over and over again, and I know you've said that she didn't see it coming or probably didn't know about it, but what do you think she was thinking when she saw that? You know what? This is a tricky question to answer because because Jesse and the writing team may come back in, in third season yeah. two minutes after, after we've seen that thing. And so I, I won't know what she's thinking until – I know what she's thinking now, but I can't – you know, I, I can't share yeah. what she's until no. I know what it does yeah. next, you know? Um, yeah. I think, you know, personally I was surprised. I think probably Shiv was just as surprised. I think Logan maybe was surprised. Who knows? But it's <laughs> yeah. 
I've been season one to season, well, no, from the pilot to season, uh, for season one, episode two, we didn't know where we were going to come back. And they came back 30 seconds after we finished episode one. And that was like shot between December 2016 and September 2017. And so like they could have come back a week later. They could have, you know, whatever. We're at the mercy of the writers. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's how it should be, I suppose. But, and um, do you think that Shiv knows about what the Logan, uh, sorry, what Kendall did in the finale of season one when, when you guys were in the UK at her wedding? Um, yeah, is she aware of that backstory, do you think, or is that another thing that you just think, we'll leave it up to the writers and who knows? I'm worried about the writers. I don't think she she is. I don't see how she could have been. I think if he's proven, he's, he has been very clandestine about it and, and it, it has been the sort of, the thing that has uh, driven him through season two in his, you know, in his turmoil and his sorrow and all of that, that's been the thing that is at the heart of, of that feeling for him. And we have that moment in, um, what episode was it, five or four, where he's, he asks for the hug. And I, mm. uh, at the end of that episode, and I think, I think she knows that something's happened, but doesn't know what it is. But also perhaps this is like, this is Kendall behavior. You know, he used to be a, drug addict, coke addict, you know, there has been sort of ups and downs, I think, with Kendall and his past that it would be hard to know which is the, which is the worst thing, <laughs> you know, that, that, that this is the worst thing really that has ever happened in his life, I think. It would be hard to know what that is unless he's going to share it. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's hard to say, right? And I, I guess it's probably better just kind of, it's freeing just so we're like, well, we'll just yeah. we'll go wherever it goes. Yeah. Um, did you anticipate how much this show has kind of really hit like a nerve with people? It's it's really fawned over. Like when people talk about Succession now, it's like their favourite show, it's the best show on TV, it's going to win a bunch of awards, you know, it's starting to actually pick up some um, recognition with awards groups and um, you guys were at the Emmys a couple of months ago, I saw you all on the red carpet. Like, did you anticipate this? Like it's pretty crazy. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I really like the Emmy weekend. I was very overwhelmed and uh, – really truly was like yeah of course i'll go to the Emmys because like it'll be great we'll like sneak in you know we'll be, able to be nominated uh no uh it was like first season was able to be nominated the second season wasn't because what well, didn't um make the time yeah. bridge and thing um and i thought yeah you would just like fold into the background and like get to observe the whole thing and then know what to do next year and hopefully next year we might be nominated um <laughs> <laughs> it's really not what happened at all and it was very overwhelming and and lovely and and uh yeah a shock uh and i guess i'm still uh dealing with that a bit as well because um i've never you know people are like you're on a hit show i'm like are we i don't (laughs) 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 know that's nice lots of people like it i enjoy doing it i'm as much of a fan of the show as other people seem to be um because i love everybody's work and it's all it was great but like i said it's a real surprise yeah Yeah. it's a it's a good one and um and is it what what's the jump being like working in australia to working in the us apart from the scale of the industries um have you found that jump to be particularly challenging or i mean you, you're on a hit show on hbo now so it's all over your what? career is hit the, you've hit the heights <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah the the scale is very different and that that does contribute to like largely the um the main difference really it's like it's a you, there's like a whole industry. I mean, not that Australia is, isn't a whole industry. Of course it is. But there's like, yeah. there's so many more people on set and there's so much sort of going on. Um, it can, it could be very easily overwhelming. Um, and also just like the difference, I guess, between shooting in New York, like you can't stop pedestrians in New York. And so we're on the street in those location shots, like on, on the street with real people coming in and out and they can cross past camera and they could yell at you if they want, or they could be taking photos of you if they want, like, and you just have to deal with it. And then for this show, I love that. Like, I would not like to be doing like the Nick or, or Hunters or something that is like set back in the period time because it be, it's harder to block out those things that are anachronistic for the time period. But for this, it's kind of brilliant because our way of shooting is you just deal with present moment, present, you know, those influences of daily life that are facing you right there. You have to do that. You have to just improvise with it, and that kind of gives it a, a life and a um, excitement. I think. Yeah, that's really interesting. I never thought of that. But anyway, 
Um, good luck at all the awards coming up for Succession. I, we have a feeling that we'll probably be seeing you on a few more red carpets. And thanks for your time today. No, no, no. Thank you. Now, everybody, go to goldderby.com right now. Make your predictions for Succession. Before you go, click subscribe and watch all of our chats just like this one with Sarah.